yes, there's room for questions, but I don't think that we have to sit here and say, yeah, you can come beat up my beliefs and I won't tell you you're wrong. Here's a specific question that you were asked by uh, your, your best buddy here. Let's see what he had to say. Just a second. So I've, I've had those kinds of experiences too, like ones that I would call like deeply miraculous and they bound my testimony to Mormonism at the time. When I say rational, what I mean is that if we're given the list of explanations for why a certain event occurs the way it does, whatever answer requires the least amount of conjecture the least amount of allowances, the answer that is the like, okay, uh, there's a noise in the kitchen. It could be an alien or it could be my pet cat. It's an alien. Pet cat is the most rational alien. No Cardinal conclusion alien. because believing in an alien requires more allowances and more conjecture to make that work. And what I'm saying is that if somebody believes deeply in Mormonism, they've had miraculous experiences, they, their testimony is all in. But in reading all of this stuff, slowly they realize that other people and other religions also have miraculous experiences. And um, as they're searching through all these issues, they come up with more. Yeah, we can pause. It just they're realizing that other people and other religions also have miraculous experiences. He's saying that as though that means Mormonism can't be true, as though the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches somewhere. It's in people... our articles of faith. We allow people to worship how, where, and what they may. And that article of faith doesn't exist in the way it does exist without a major insinuation that that's good for people. God's yeah. okay with other oh, religions and they're okay. Oh, has truth. I'll go, I'll yeah. go further. 1978 church, official church statement, God's love for all mankind, where the church specifically says certain popes, Protestant reformers, Muhammad, Buddha, were inspired. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I was never taught. I was never taught we're the only people that have interactions with God. Like I yeah. was, and, and it is not at all Mormon doctrine. This is an absolute straw man argument that's put up by the same liars, and I call them liars, who said that they can't get any of us to come on their show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that, that yeah. we won't come on because we're too scared. These are the same people lying to you saying that the Mormon church teaches other people can't have positive religious experiences. Yeah. It is categorically false can yeah. we continue and, and he just i i just want to point out that he brings yeah. that up as though that's like a presupposed thing that everybody yeah. knows right like within mormonism no one else can have spiritual experiences or mormonism falls apart that's not also the way things are sorry i just second nephi 29 11 for i command all men both in the east and in the west and in the north and in the south and in the south and the island of the sea that they shall write the words which i speak unto them for out of the books which shall be written will i judge the world yeah. hey <laughs> What about other scriptures? Another miracle to happen in the, it's in our book. Yeah. I command them to write it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, that's a really good point, Quaker. I never thought of that one. Yeah. yeah that's and it's solid. all through our scriptures. It's all yeah. through everything about what the actual doctrine of the church is <laughs> that other people experience the spirit. They experience God in their own way and they have truth in every single religion that's like a core teaching of the apostasy in the first place yeah those people are holding on to truth so yeah i just so let's finish <laughs> or, or let's let um this bill real character finish digging his intellectual grave here the question continues with the following rational answers again the answer that requires the least amount of conjecture in their mind do you I, i'm just kind of asking do you make space for people to leave this church honestly and not to, not to, not to have just been lazy or or wanted to eat Chick Fil A, but to have really spent deep emotional energy trying to deconstruct this thing, and to look at like what's real and what isn't, and really took that search seriously, and now are on the outside of the church. Okay, so I would say first off, this whole idea of making room. Yes, dude, there is room for literally everybody. There is room for everybody in, in, in the mansions of our father, shall we say, mm -hmm. in the church. I notice that there's this big trend right now to say making room. Um, it, it, it's the big woke progressive term. Okay, I'm not saying that he's trying to I inject wokeism in this specific regard. But I do feel it's overused because it's not my job to facilitate your cynical interpretation of history 
especially when I have personal interactions with you now in which you've said, I was too scared to come on your show and you can't get Mormons to come on the show. Mm -hmm. and, and so will you accept that that reality that I've suggested that is not true is true. Yes, I will make room for anybody with doubts and I will talk about ex extra evidences of those doubts. I will contextualize those doubts. I will support you if they overcome you and you have a faith crisis and decide to exit the church. What I will not do is allow you to rewrite history with the most cynical lens possible using half truths propagated by people who hate us. And that is exactly what you're doing. Yeah. So, no, I will not pave the way for intellectual enemies of honesty. Yeah. Also, this is like a Trojan horse sort of thing. It's yeah. labeled, love thy neighbor, meaning like you've got to let everyone disagree with you and tell you you're a liar. And you say, yeah, you know what? You're right. You don't have to believe other people are right in order to love them. Also... He, the way they're talking about it, they're like, do you, do you allow space for those? You know, I was I was Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually left a church. You know what I didn't do? Make a Methodist Discussions podcast. <laughs> I was like, hey, guys, Mr. Dunbar, pa uh, Pastor Robin, yeah, I believe in the Book of Mormon. I don't think I believe in the Trinity. All right, well, if you ever believe in it, come back. Okay. And that was it. <laughs> you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, if, well, if, I, if my buddy goes... Yeah, I don't. I just don't believe any of this. I don't believe in. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the church. I just don't believe in it. I'm like, all right, if you don't believe it, you don't believe in it. And you want to talk that, about it? No, that really. I think okay. is a big thing. And and <laughs> like, yeah. I I guess there's something of this guy's reaction. It appears to me he maybe had experiences with people who were bent on him staying in the church, and then like. Okay. Disliked him after, I guess, maybe is something Which that is happened. Which is suburbanism, as Kwaku calls yeah, it. I it, just call it's it. It's not the doctrine of the church. Yeah. Like, the, literally, we have parables. That's, of, I call it small townism. Uh huh. You know what I'm Has saying? Has this guy ever seen any teenage, like, rom com with <laughs> the school bully with, like, Lindsay Lohan and Rachel McAdams? You know what I'm saying? Like, like someone judge me. That goes back to Joseph Smith. No, that's because you live in a cul-de-sac. Like, that's just... Dude, yeah. I, I, I am shocked. Everyone in America experiences this thing, and, and they think they are unique. Yeah. They think that, like, like it's a personal Mormon thing. No, go anywhere. Everybody does this. You live in a society. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. And I, I just want to say that there are absolutely people who learn things about the church that they maybe didn't know before for some reason or another, and they have something difficult to deal with. And I think that that is fine. Like, everyone has a different spiritual journey. That yeah. is something that can happen. And we don't need, like, we don't need to attack people who are questioning things and trying to figure it out. Yeah, but, but see, also, let's, let's make sure we understand the use of your word, Brad. Because questioning... Question is like, okay, cool. I have a specific and, question here. And that's what I'm getting to. It's is not attacking under the guise of exactly, questioning. Exactly. When, when it ceases being questioning and they're, they're no longer saying, hey, I read this weird thing in like the CES letter. What, what do you think happened with this situation? And it turns into, hey, you should really read the CES letter because this is the thing that's going to break your shelf because I know you have one too. Yeah, right? and you're really it, secretly aiding and abetting a bunch of uh, pedos and yeah, you're exactly. actually part of ritual blood sacrifice. Like, remember that one podcast where John DeLynn oh, <laughs> did yeah. like, talks yeah. about ritual blood sacrifice? What? Oh, yeah. 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 He, he, br <laughs> he brings this guy on to talk about like, like um, uh, like the church being involved in ritual blood sacrifice, and the guy's like, "Yeah, that was a hoax from the '80s. No, no children are being abducted into death." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Well, don't you think it's like just like these people experienced it? And are you trivializing what they experienced?" He goes, "Yeah, I am. It didn't happen. Like, yeah. it's, it's, I'm sorry. I'm the expert on this. It it was, didn't happen. Well, and, and the guy was not holy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the thing is." Yes, there's room for questions, but I don't think that we have to sit here and say, yeah, you can come beat up my beliefs and I won't tell you you're wrong in order for us to have made space for sincere questioners. Also, Carter, this you know? is wokeism. Be this is wokeism because what it's doing is it's taking a popular, you are not allowed to deny someone's experience. And that what that language means on its face is true. Okay, I can't say that you didn't um, brush your teeth this morning if you did. Okay, I, yeah. I have no, like, it is not a true statement if I say that. But what they mean is, 
if I'm claiming I am hurt, you must disagree with my narrative as to how I was hurt. And if you don't agree, then that means you don't believe I was hurt. And it's manipulation. And pe- members of the church need to understand that these people are using this type of manipulation. And once you understand that's what they're doing, it's really easy to write most of their stuff off. Yes. Well, that's all Dave Chappelle ever said about how we've accepted two great lies. One is that um, you disagree with somebody, you must abjectly hate them. And I can't remember the other ones, so we're going to look it up. But I do have, I do have to say this. Um, I continually say that these ex-Mormon, anti-Mormons consistently do not refute scripture. They only end up fulfilling it. And I think this interaction right now um, is a perfect example because literally all the prophecies, whether it's from the Apostle Paul or whether it's in the Book of Revelation or whether it's in the Book of Mormon, talks about you will be convicted for being an offender, being an offender for a word. Yep. And they talk about the redefinition of words and, and, and the rewriting of history and so on and so forth. And, and I have to say, the anti-Mormon community, especially these atheistic ex-Mormons, need to figure out where they stand in the dictionary on some of these words. Because he literally came out and said, do you make space for people who have a rational interpretation of history, which has this wild insinuation that you don't have a rational interpretation of history. Okay. And, and, and you want to talk rationality? Let's talk rationality, Bill Real. And you give an example where if there's a sound in the kitchen, was it an alien or was it my cat? Believing in the alien requires more steps between your perceived reality and what really happened, whereas knowing it was the cat, well, that requires less steps. This is coming from the same people who can't figure out whether Joseph Smith was a stupid charlatan with an 80 IQ who bamboozled a bunch of people around him, or whether he was this evil genius <laughs> capable of the longest of cons, capable yeah. of bamboozling thousands simultaneously because he actually went to this place and took from Solomon Spalding, and then he went from this place and took from the 15th book of Napoleon, and they went from this place and took names of, of cities that weren't founded until 100 years after him, and we have affidavits! There are affidavits <laughs> from 1860! The hurlbutt you know? affidavits. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> which they, have been disproven. <laughs> they ignore need that. to figure out which, which one is it. And by the way, if you say the measure of rational interpretation of history is how many steps it takes to get to that reality, which is more believable? Yeah, yeah there was a guy who was divinely inspired and he channeled that inspiration into a, a, a work now known as the Book of Mormon. Mm-hmm. Or this complex roundabout, no, 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 he didn't. He didn't. There was actually this dude who took from this pastor who wasn't known to Joseph Smith until 20 years later, but then he secretly, you know, it's... Yeah, and and it's crazy to me because what it all comes down to is you get to choose which belief path seems more convoluted. It's all up to you. Every individual can look at what happens and decide okay, do I think this is crazier or this is crazier? Because I can see somebody thinking it takes more conjecture for Joseph Smith to have been inspired because they don't believe in God, right? Yeah. If that person is not believing God, of course it takes more conjecture for them to yeah, I also believe think Joseph it, Smith wasn't divinely inspired. I also think it's silly because he's presenting the life as if it's just, it's it's black or white. Like yeah. it's like, oh, alien or cat? It's never that simple. Uh-huh. One example I want to give is... Um, uh, do you guys ever? Do you guys know about Gobek, Gobekli Tepe? Oh boy, oh, no. you're Gobekli going Tepe Graham Hancock on us, aren't you? No, I'm just. It, it's an important thing. To look up Gobekli Tepe. It's a series. It, it's it's a, essentially little monuments. A, a, a temple built. It's the Stonehenge of the Middle East that basically puts human 12, 12, advanced civilization ten thousand years earlier. Than there are petroglyphs. There are high, there are, mm. are carvings of illustri- like like symbols. And pictures carved onto stone 12,000 years ago, hinting at some very interesting things. Hmm. Now, it's not rational because it's, it's, but when people say rational, what they mean, it's not likely. All of science and all of history pointed a completely different narrative of the Middle East and the cradle of civilization. And uncovering this is changing it all. And so, guys like Bill Real, when presented with this information, would Bet on Gobekli Tepe not being real. They would say it's a fraud or it's fake or it's actually just a medieval invention. Mm. When the reality is, the real answer is even crazier. Mm. And, and, and in fact, 
everyone was actually wrong. The majority of the thought was wrong. And the couple archaeologists who were the wackos actually got it right. Mm -hmm. So even you, when you remove religion and you put on Bill Reel's tinfoil hat, what this actually means <laughs> is you have to deny everything interesting about world history and everything that, that goes against the accepted secular narrative. These people are acting like they're trying to break you out of the chains of religion. They're actually just trying to put you into the bonds mm -hmm. of all mainstream thought, all corporatist academia, and e they don't want you to actually think for yourself, and that's the funny thing. They pretend that they do. You bring mm -hmm. up a good point. Marie Curie, or Mary Curie, no, it's Marie Curie, mm -hmm. chemo brain working right here, um, never would have found radioactivity if she would have relied simply upon Arkham's razor. Occam's razor? Occam's yeah. razor, yeah. Yeah, once again, chemo brain talking there.